What's going on everyone, this is Dom, and today we're taking a look at Samsung's new Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge. Now these are supposed to be the best Android devices of the year, but realistically, in Apple fashion, it's more like an S-Cycle phone, just a refinement. That's not necessarily a bad thing though, but there's less to get excited about this year. Jumping into these boxes, both devices carry the same contents. We have the Galaxy S7 Edge on one side and the Galaxy S7 on the other. And along with that, you'll get a micro USB cable and wall adapter, as well as a USB connector, which will make it super easy to transfer over files to your new phone. And there's even a pair of earbuds included. Anyway, looking at these phones, there's not a huge difference when compared to their predecessors. The design has been slightly improved in style, which is nice, and we finally have a true black Galaxy device, as last year sported a dark blue color. There's still a fingerprint sensor built into the home button that works great, and a heart rate sensor on the backside, along with Samsung's not so famous Android skin that can sometimes crowd things up, but it's gotten a lot better over the years. Anyway, let's talk about what's really different here, or at least what's important. First off, with the Galaxy S7 Edge, we now have a larger 5.5 inch QHD display, which looks absolutely stunning, as does the 5.1 inch QHD display on the Galaxy S7. The Edge screen functionality has been redesigned a bit as well to provide more space for things like Apps Edge, Tasks Edge, and more, which is definitely a welcome change given the expanded real estate here. But wait one second, what is this new Tasks Edge? Well, it's a new feature here on the Galaxy S7 Edge that will allow you to create shortcuts to app-specific functions, which is pretty damn cool in my opinion. Another notable change between both devices is Samsung's new Always On feature, which will display the clock, calendar, or a background image along with notification icons while the screen is off. It's pretty cool, but it's not a major selling point in my opinion. As mentioned, the design of these two phones has slightly changed, adopting characteristics from Samsung's Galaxy Note 5. But damn they are still slippery as hell and collect fingerprints like no one's business. Luckily, that can easily be solved with a skin from dbrand like I have here, and I'll leave a link below for you if you want to pick one up for yourself. Another welcomed addition this year is micro SD card expansion. Yes, it's finally back, and it's integrated into the SIM card tray. And another thing that's been revived in the Galaxy lineup is water resistance. So now, we don't have to worry about getting a Galaxy active. We have an IP68 rating here, so you won't have to worry about any Anything when it comes to water, and there's no pesky port flaps to get in the way either. If you're curious about the specs, it's going to depend on your region, but you'll be blessed with either a Snapdragon 820 processor or Samsung's Exynos 8890 chipset. Both sport 4 gigs of RAM, and the Galaxy S7 Edge packs a 3600 milliamp hour battery, while the S7 has a 3000 milliamp hour battery. Now, when it comes to camera performance, Samsung actually lowered the megapixels this year. I know, crazy, right? It went from 16 to 12 here in the S7 and the S7. S7 Edge. As surprising as that may be for anyone to do these days, it's not really a noticeable difference in my opinion compared to last year's models. The camera works great and I stand by saying it's the best camera on a smartphone, but I'll let you be the judge of that and I'll leave a photo gallery link below along with my full thoughts on the camera in the full review, so be sure that you're subscribed for that. Listen, I'm a fan of both of these phones, but at the end of the day, nothing special is happening here. No real innovation, just necessary refinements and Samsung playing catch up by including features that we already had on previous Galaxy S devices. It's great that Samsung is hearing our voices and addressing these issues, but Sadly, this is nothing more than a Galaxy S6S, but I'll let you know how I feel in the long run when I get around to the full review, so be sure that you're subscribed if you want to catch that video, and if you enjoyed this one, feel free to leave it a thumbs up as it helps out the channel a lot, and let me know what your favorite feature of the Galaxy S7 is in the comment section below. Thanks again for watching everyone, this is Dom, and I'll catch you in the next video.